Hey guys, I'm Jesse, and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite books of all time in a spoiler-free fashion so you can decide if you want to read it or not. And that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The Night Circus is, like I said, one of my favorite books. So I really want more people to read it. Like, I'd love to talk to more people about it. But it is one of those books that I have a really hard time recommending to everyone as like a blanket book, right? It's not like if you like fantasy, read it, you're gonna love it. Like with um, like the Mistborn series. Typically, if people really enjoy epic fantasy, I can be like, read Mistborn, it's great. And they'll be like, yes, I love it. I cannot say that about this book because it is so different. But I love it. And if you have reading taste kind of similar to mine, then you may love it too. You may not. But we're going to talk about this book, kind of tell you everything about it that you may or may not like, and then you can go from there and make your own decision as to whether you want to read this or not. So The Night Circus is a very whimsical, almost nonsensical fantasy book that I think actually borders more on like a magical realism as opposed to fantasy because of different... Um, like kind of light magic things along those lines that don't really bring it up to what I consider a like high epic fantasy type level. This is definitely more like soft magic. So if you don't like soft magic, you probably won't like this. We're following a few different characters. The main two are Celia and Marco. And we start off when they are very, very young, small children. Celia is a magician being raised by her father who is also a magician and then Marco is I believe an orphan who is being raised kind of like by this other magician caretaker and this caretaker as well as the father of Celia are rivals they do not like each other they don't get along so they basically enter their kids into this like lifelong competition and the kids don't really know much about it and as readers we don't either. We are following them kind of through their life as they know that they are in competition with someone, but that's like all they know. They don't know what the competition is, who each other are, nothing along those lines. They just know there is this competition and they have to win. And so we kind of follow them through their life and we come to this place where we follow them as they both kind of join in different ways this magical traveling circus. This circus is very whimsical. It's very mysterious and it kind of pops up. It's there for a few days and then it, it, it's gone again. And, you know, people are just like enthralled with this circus and they're following it and they really love it. And a lot of the like magic is, is actual magic and not just like, you know, illusion or smoke and mirrors. And, you know, Marco is more on the, what I would say, like the admin side. He is like on the business side. And then Celia is a performer. And throughout this book, they are growing and learning and they eventually do meet and figure out who each other is. And then we are also following a, another like younger boy kind of throughout his life. And he is from this like kind of poor family and this like working class town and he is obsessed with this circus and he is like just just over the moon obsessed with this circus but his family is very much like all right you need to you know, work and do this and do that and all he wants to do is like run away to this circus so we're following him kind of as like an aside to our main two character like competition that we don't really know anything and there's a circus. That's kind of the best way to describe it because it is very hard to describe just because of the whimsical nature of this story and not wanting to really give anything away. Um, but we're going to kind of talk about some of like the plot beats, some of the like main things that may either draw you in or like really put you off of this. The first, as I've mentioned, is the fact that this is very soft magic. It's very whimsical. It's kind of nonsensical and it's got pretty lyrical writing. So as far as like the magic goes, we don't ever really get an explanation on like what the magic is, what it can do, 
how it came to be. We don't have that hard magic system where there are rules where we know we, like this can be done and this cannot. There are like kind of different types of magic in this world and people can do different things. And it's like the magic is known and it's just accepted, right? So we even as readers never really get a whole lot of explanation as to why or what. It just is. And that's kind of what makes it a soft, whimsical magic system. We don't really ever get that explanation. And if that bothers you, then this might not be for you. But honestly, I really liked the ability to just kind of like suspend my disbelief and be like, all right, the magic just is. It's there. It's a part of this world and we're going to roll with it. It also like some stuff just doesn't like make sense in the way that you would think it is. And this kind of goes along with it being a softer magic system. Like some things you're like, well, if this and this and this, and you're like, nope, you just have to roll with it. Just enjoy the ride more so than like understand what is going on. It also has pretty lyrical writing. I wouldn't say that it is like obnoxiously descriptive or anything like that, but the writing is kind of atmospheric and it is very beautiful and lyrical. And it's very much like if you've read one of her other books, if you've read like The Starless Sea, you'll probably like this because it has that same writing style where it is very like poetic in nature and very descriptive without being like obnoxiously over descriptive. She really makes the atmosphere a character on its own, if that makes sense. Like you go into this book and especially during scenes like in the circus, it's almost like you can, you can smell the candy corn. You can taste the cotton candy in the air. Like you are so absorbed in this story that the atmosphere and the setting are just like all encompassing and it is very, very important to the story. And I really love that. Um, it's like that, but without being like pages upon pages upon pages of description, which I don't like. So I think she like really finds that line between being descriptive and atmospheric and over Lisa. We do have romance and this is, you know, a pretty romance heavy book. We do follow, like I said, our main two characters throughout their lifetime. And while I say that it's a romance heavy book, that means it's a romance heavy book for me. And it is not um, like smutty. It is not spicy. It is a very like sweet and innocent type, like very slow burn romance in this book and if you're going into it expecting like this whirlwind romance like you're not gonna get that but you what you do get is this very slow burn kind of will they won't they um are they gonna meet are they gonna figure out who each other is one knows who one is the other doesn't know like and they fall in love and it's very like beautiful and slow and innocent and sweet so just kind of know that going in like don't expect like a whirlwind romance or anything along those lines this is also a very very character driven story um, I typically tend to lean more towards plot driven stories where they're like very fast paced and like the plot just keeps you moving. And this one does not do that. While it does take place over like a lifetime, it is a very slow burn. It is a very slow paced book. It is a very atmospheric, whimsical world. And we don't get like like big, like heavy plot beats. We don't get things like a Sander Lanch or anything along those lines. We just get this beautiful lyrical world that we are just drawn into as opposed to like fighting the good fight or whatever, you know, happens in like, you know, your traditional fantasy novels. This is very much a character story. We are in their heads a lot. We are following them and their emotions and things that they're kind of deciding between and their decisions and how that affects other people and how that affects them. And like I said, it's very slow and not slow in a bad way, slow in a very purposeful way. Then we have kind of like the ending and the ending is very open, I would say. Like we get a good conclusion, 
But the way Erin Morgenstern kind of writes her books, and I've noticed this from reading The Starless Sea as well, which is another one of my favorites, it has a very open ending. So if you want like all of your like threads tied up in a nice little bow, that is not going to be what this book does. We do obviously have a conclusion and it's a satisfying one, but it is very much in a life goes on type of way. And it leaves us with like just enough questions that we can kind of imagine what happens afterwards as opposed to being like, this is what happens. And, you know, I like both, but I really do enjoy a life goes on type of ending. A lot of my favorite books have that. Um, I feel like the Queens of Renthea series has that. Obviously, the Starless Sea has that. This book has that. So a lot of my like absolute favorites have this like life goes on type of ending where you can kind of imagine where the characters go next, but you don't have to be told what the characters go on to do the rest of their lives, if that makes sense. This book also really, really lends itself to a reread. And that is something about Erin Morgenstern's writing in general is both of her books that she has out right now um, lend themselves to rereads because they are so detailed and they have so much just like lyrical, whimsical, beautiful writing that you kind of need to reread them in order to fully grasp everything that's going on. You are going to get something new and something different every time you read one of these books. Every time you read The Night Circus, you're going to pick up on like little things that you didn't notice the first time. And I think that's really fantastic because I love to reread. I love to reread while um, like annotating and then get you know, things that I didn't get the first time, pick up on like little plot beats and just little moments, because there are so many of them included in this story. And I think it's just a fantastic book. It's also a standalone. So that's really cool in the realm of fantasy, because most of what we get in the realm of fantasy are series or trilogies, big series, and this is a standalone. It is self-contained and you can read it, love it, and be done with the entire story, which is something that I know I need a lot of times because like I read some real big series. And so sometimes a standalone is just real nice, right? But yeah, this book, <laughs> it's not going to be for everyone. And if you like a whimsical writing style and soft magic and just like really lyrical, beautiful romance that's very sweet and innocent, that is not like a whirlwind, then I definitely recommend picking this one up because I know I had so much fun reading it. And it's one that like I'm excited to reread whenever I get to it again, because I know I'm going to pick up on more things about it. <laughs> if you want more um, in-depth conversation about this book, you can actually check out my full spoiler free book review in my blog and I will link that down below. And yeah, just let me know what you thought about this book. If it's one that you love, if it's one that you don't love, uh, let me know too, because we can have different opinions and that's fine. But I just want to know, what do you think about The Night Circus or Aaron Morgenstern's writing in general? Because it's very polarizing and I love the discourse that we can have just like a nice healthy conversation on what we like and what we don't like. Like that's what we're here for, right? All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jesse, and I will see you next time. Bye.